Hello everyone! In this video, we will learn how to kit bash assets in Unreal Engine 5. Kit bashing is a pretty useful technique where you can combine multiple different assets to create something new and unique. In Unreal, we will use a feature called Packed Level Instance as an alternate term for kit bash. In this video, we will be using Megascan's assets with Nanite enabled, but remember, you can use any assets with or without Nanite. Kit bashing can be a massive help if you are doing large open worlds and even if not, it's generally pretty helpful. Before we begin, let's take a look at the benefits of kit bashing and using them. First thing is performance. If you are using packed level instances aka kit bashed assets, they are converted to instance static meshes. Placing instance assets over unique actors of the same mesh will give you a performance boost. Second is ease of placement. You can simply drag your kit bashed asset from content browser to your level and duplicate it as much as you want just like you do with any other assets. Third is reusability. Kit bashed assets are not tied to your level which means you can reuse it just like any blueprinted asset across any number of levels. Keep in mind though, since there are blueprint actors, any change you make to the asset will propagate it to all instances placed in every level. Now let's begin. Inside Quixel Bridge, we'll grab some high poly assets. We'll just grab some random assets from Limestone Query. So, my download settings are if you go to download settings here, I download these are the uh, textures that I download. And models, I'll download LOD4 and high poly source. The reason why I download LOD4 is for collision purpose. We'll choose 4K resolution and we'll hit download. We'll download few more assets and after that we will kit bash our assets. We have finished our download and these are these are the assets that we downloaded three of them and before we import we'll do some channel packing and for channel packing I use a free software from Fidifis which you can download from github the, this link I'll put in the description and you can open that and we will combine some of the grayscale textures into one so we'll navigate there we'll open the roughness and for the green channel we'll add the specular and for the blue channel we'll add the cavity if you have AO then you can add AO but unfortunately if some of the quick assets doesn't come with AO channel and for packing I'll just save it and say t underscore the id of the asset and just say packed. I'll do the same for all three assets. After doing this step, it's time to import them. So I'll open the content browser, dock it in the layout, create a new folder, call it megascans, and create another new folder with the id of that asset. And in here, we will import our stuff. So select the packed uh, high poly asset, the LOD4 and the albedo. We'll drag and drop. And for the LOD4, make sure build nanite is not enabled. And these these are my settings here. And I'll just import it. For the high poly asset, you can see here it's high poly. We'll enable nanite and just import it. After importing, we will open the pack channel, set the compression to masks, and we'll create a new material. We'll open it and drag and drop all these assets in here, and we'll save it. Then, we will add the material here, and we will also add the collision to complex collision, and close it. Like this, we will import all our assets, we now have all the required assets and before we begin I'll just do one more step that's completely optional but it's worth. So I'll go to built-in plugins and search for modeling. Now this modeling tools will let you apply modifiers to an existing object like you can bend them, you can deform them in any way you want. So I'll just enable it and restart. After enabling that plugin we'll go to the content drawer again and we'll just duplicate this asset right here. I'll just duplicate it and call it bent. 
because we are going to bend this acid using the bent modifier. To apply the modifier, we'll drag and drop this into the level and we'll switch to the modeling editing mode and here you can see under deform you have warp modifier so you will select it it might take some time just to apply it because this is a very high poly acid when the modifier is applied you can see a preview of how it's going to bend it so we want to bend it in the y-axis so we'll just bend it like this okay so now you can see it's like a little bit bended the white uh, acid that you're seeing here the white color is the original acid and this gray color is the one after applying the modifier you can also assign how much degrees you want to bend for example this is 90 degrees if you want more you can increase it 180 degrees and it will bend more and if you want lower you can just put a smaller number so in my case I'll just put it 90 degrees or maybe like 45 degrees a little bit bending is fine and we will accept it so after applying you you can see that we have a bended asset here and we'll just save it exit out of the modeling tool and we'll bring rest of the assets all right and now we will start our kit bashing Okay, so we have done our kit bashing. This can be the worst kit bashing you've ever seen. So, anyways, but you'll get the idea. You use multiple assets and then you combine them to create something new. In a production environment, if you want to copy this over and move it around, it's going to be a very tedious job. So, to avoid that, what Epic has done is that you can create packed level instance blueprint using these assets. So, what you're going to do is we will select the canyon here and press shift E to select all of the same assets using the same static mesh so if you move around you can see that it's all the same and we will select our bent asset we'll press shift E to select all of it and then we'll select one of the slab asset here and press shift E now you have all of the assets selected and we'll press right click and create from selection now here you have three types level instance packed level instance and packed level instance blueprint you'll have to choose packed level instance blueprint if you want to move it around I mean if you want to bring it from content browser and place it in your level at later if you're using packed level instance then it will only be available in this level and if you delete it then you can't place it again and then you can disable or enable external actors if you want. If you enable external actors, each asset will be saved as its own actor. So that if you're working in a team, each member can check out any asset they want and it won't interfere with other workflow. So personally, I'll disable it since I'm the one, only one working. And I'll set the pivot type to sender min z. And then press OK. And then you'll have to save the new map. That means the assets that you, that you have selected will be saved as a new map so I'll type it kit bash 01 and we'll have to name the blueprint also which is referencing the kit bash 01 level that we just saved so we'll I'll just use the auto autogen name and now it's prompting me to save the level that I'm currently working on so I'll just type my map now you can see all the assets that have been save the main kit bash asset level and the blueprint that is referencing that level so now you can go back to your level you can duplicate it you can rotate it you can do whatever you want and if you're making a new level like a di completely different level you can just place it again so that's the usage of kit bashing assets and saving it as a blueprint and if you want to move things around after after placing it you can press the edit button here and you can move things around and then select the main kit bash level and press commit changes it will ask you to save that uh, asset that that level and you can save it and then it's there 
Remember that when you're editing and committing changes, it will propagate to every asset that is placed in every level. So it's not per asset or per instance that you place in the level. So that's it about kit bashing. I hope you liked the tutorial. Thank you for watching.